and the uh, hemp was planted. The rows were running just like these corn rows were running now. When I turned around, all I could see was sled cars, low boys with tractors on them, and everything coming down the road, coming this way. It was people coming from the other way. It was people coming from all around. Right now, we're going to place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. But you didn't know that your field was about to be destroyed. No. I can't call my lawyer before y'all mess with it? No, so you call your lawyer down to jail. We're we going to cut it regardless. Your lawyer, your lawyer can't stop us from cutting it. It's grown in an unlawful location. It looked like they were coming to take down an army of criminals or something. I didn't know that it took that many people or much manpower to come. One farmer and them standing in a hemp field. Well, that raid on that South Carolina hemp farmer was the subject of our seize and destroy investigation. And that farmer sued the state law enforcement division after agents mowed down his hemp crop in 2019. The farmer accused Sled of hiding evidence from him in his civil suit. Farmer also accused Sled of hiding its plan to destroy his crop from a judge when agents got a warrant to arrest him. Five months ago, the judge in the civil case fined Sled Chief Mark Keel $11,000 for discovery abuses in the farmer's lawsuit. Well, Keel appealed, but the state's appeals court dismissed Chief Keel's appeal this week. And here's Chief Investigator Jody Barr with a seize and destroy update. What this binder right here represents is our efforts to simply get that which should have been produced at the outset of this litigation. Patrick McLaughlin represents Trent Pendarvis. Daddy been here since, they've been here since the 18... 1890. A low country farmer who decided to get into the hemp farming business in 2019 after the state legalized growing the crop. Pendarvis got a license, then planted his 40 acre allotment in two fields. When one field could not take the crop at planting time, Pendarvis planted in another. So I was to that point where from waiting for it to rain for a couple weeks, to it getting too wet that I had to do something with the plants right then or they weren't going to be any good. You'd lose them. Yeah. That new field was not the one he listed coordinates for when he filed his hemp farming application with the state months before. When he amended his acreage form later, the Ag Department called SLED for a criminal investigation. So when I had the own farm visit, I told a lady, hey, the coordinates isn't right. They didn't know they weren't right. If I wouldn't have told them, they probably still wouldn't have known they wasn't right. But I was trying to have everything right, so I told them that they wasn't right. This wasn't some hidden marijuana grow in, in the middle of nowhere. The state knew where this crop was. Yes. The state had been there. A couple times. In September 2019. Right now, we're going to place you under arrest for growing hemp without a license. SLED agents first ask the state attorney general for a legal opinion. One month before the raid, the AG advised SLED to seek judicial authorization before destroying the crop. SLED went to Dorchester County Chief Circuit Court Judge Diane Goodstein, asking her to sign a seizure and destruction order. SLED, though, did not show Goodstein that AG opinion. Emails show Goodstein refused to sign SLED's order anyway. Instead, she invited SLED to bring the farmer in for a hearing. But SLED didn't accept the invitation. One week later, the state's top law enforcement agency went to a lower court judge and got an arrest warrant, charging Trent Pendarvis with growing hemp without a license. But agents did not tell that judge of their plans to destroy the crop. Pendarvis' lawyers argued SLED purposely worked to deceive Judge Goodstein by withholding the AG opinion. Their jobs is to preserve and protect the rights of a farmer like Trent Pendarvis. They knew what his rights were, and it wasn't going to hurt anybody to afford him the opportunity to protect those rights. And instead of doing that, they trampled all over him. So in reality, SLED was going around the Attorney General and around the judge all for what? To go after Trent Pendarvis. Why? Ever since Pendarvis' arrest, his attorneys worked to figure out who planned and executed the destruction of his hemp crop. They filed lawsuits searching for answers. We started trying to get evidence in Trent's case 
in January of 2020. Ever since, McLaughlin's battled SLED over discovery in the case. In multiple filings, McLaughlin accused SLED of hiding evidence and purposely delaying discovery. The defendant's conduct in this case was not just obstructionist discovery conduct meant to obstruct the plaintiff from getting discovery. It was also meant to mislead the plaintiff. And qu quite frankly, it was also meant to mislead the court. McLaughlin and SLED Chief Mark Kill's attorney met in a virtual hearing last October. You look at what was presented to Judge Goodstein was a document that was uh, intended to uh, allow for the seizure uh, of the illegal hemp crop and before it was destroyed to give the owner the opportunity to request and receive a post seizure hearing. That is what SLED went uh, to Judge Goodstein uh, to uh, try to discuss with her. And they were unsuccessful in discussing it with her. She would not uh, have a meeting uh, with, uh, with the SLED uh, uh, general counsel's office on that. We didn't seek judicial approval to destroy the hemp crop. We sought judicial approval to make a pre-seizure, um, I mean, a pre-hearing seizure uh, of, the, of the hemp crop, give the opportunity to the owner to request a post-seizure hearing. McLaughlin argued SLED hid evidence from the farmer and would not properly answer questions in the lawsuit. The result, the litigations well into its third year. And I stand here and say they got every single email. Well, we produced the entire files on these two particular incidents, these two particular um, uh, investigations. Uh, to the ex extent there may have been some additional emails that he was able to obtain through uh, discovery with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, I'm not disputing that. But the bottom line is to suggest that we didn't produce emails along the lines of what was request for is just absolutely false. Four months after this hearing, did you and your agency conspire to arrest this gonna, man and destroy his property? Judge, I've already told you I'm not gonna answer any questions about anything that has to do with this pending litigation. The judge hit SLED Chief Mark Kill with an $11,000 sanction. The judge called Kill's discovery conduct intentional, willful, and bad faith, and failing to properly respond, ignoring written notifications of deficient responses, forcing the plaintiff to file motions, forcing the court to schedule hearings, and then at the last minute, attempting to cure the deficiency is not conducting discovery in good faith and is evidence of intentional, willful, and bad faith conduct. I find that the prejudice to the plaintiff from Kill's conduct is clear, convincing, and substantial. Basic discovery in this case has now been delayed for over a year. Kill asked Judge Mate Murphy to reconsider her order, and the judge denied Kill's request. Mark Kill, a licensed South Carolina attorney himself, had 30 days to pay the sanction and turn over the remaining discovery. But on the 30th day, Kill appealed Judge Murphy's orders. The appeals court threw out the chief's appeal, citing case law showing Kill could not appeal Judge Murphy's order without first being held in contempt of it. Kill's attorney disagreed with that reasoning, writing in a filing. A monetary sanctions order should be treated differently because the sanctioned party is given the unfair and arguably unconstitutional choice of paying the sanctions and forfeiting its appeals rights even after final judgment because the payment will moot that issue or otherwise being held in contempt of court, which is fundamentally unfair choice. The farmer's legal team believes SLED's appeal was yet another attempt to further delay the lawsuit. We still don't have everything we should have gotten, but I can tell you right now, the evidence we've got is a hell of a lot more evidence showing the defendants in the civil case, hell of a lot more evidence that they willfully violated Trent's constitutional rights more than Trent ever willfully violating the Hemp Act. 
We again asked Sled Chief Mark Kill for an interview, but he would not agree to sit with us. I also sent Kill a list of questions, including whether this appeal was filed to further delay the hemp farmer's civil case. Kill did not answer that question or any of the five points I emailed him earlier this week. The next step here. Kill could ask the state Supreme Court to look at his appeal or he could be held in contempt in Dorchester County and then refile his appeal with the state's appellate court. This case is far from over and we'll keep you updated along the way.